Hey y'all, in this video we will be going over how to calculate a heart rate from an EKG or ECG strip. Welcome to CASRN, where I teach you about all things nursing. There are three rules to counting or three methods to counting on an EKG strip. So there is counting the QRS, there's the rule of 300 and the rule of 1500. First off, we have the QRS method. So what you wanna make sure that you have is a six second strip. And you're going to go through and you're gonna mark every fifth box. Now remember in my other video where we just go through the EKG basics, five boxes equals one second. So that part's important. Then you're gonna go through it and you're gonna count the QRS complexes and then you're gonna multiply that by 10 because 60 seconds are in a minute and you need to know beats per minute. That's how we calculate all things heart rate. So in counting a six second strip, you need to make sure that you're multiplying that by 10. So let me walk you through how to do this. So right here we've got a strip and you can see there's it's just cut off just a little bit for a six seconds. So if we count this one right here, We've got, this is our one right here. Our, and then, so then we're gonna go one, two, three, four, five. So there's one second. One, two, three, four, five. Two seconds. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, right? So we can go through here and you can see, you know, we're gonna be counting five so that we have all those six seconds. And then we're gonna go one, two, three, four, five. And our last one just runs a little bit off the screen. So then what we're gonna do is I'm gonna mark each of these into six into one second intervals is how it lines up. So you can see right here that we have one, two, three, four, five, and six. So each one of those spaces in between the lines counts as one second because there's five blocks in between each line. So then after that, we're gonna count our QRS complexes. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Then we're gonna take that number, number nine, and times it by 10, and that's going to tell us that we have 90 beats per minute. Next up, we're gonna do the rule of 300. So this strip is the same. So remember, as we go through this, the strip is the same. Uh, but the reason that we do 300, because the number is gonna come out a little bit different. So you'll notice this as we go through. But um, 300 is because 300 large boxes equals one second. So what we're gonna do here is that you're gonna choose two QRS complexes. You're going to count the large squares in between those two boxes, in between those two QRS complexes. Then you're gonna divide 300 by the number of large squares or boxes that you were able to count in between those two. So right here, we're gonna use these two QRS complexes. So if we come over here and we count the large boxes, we're going to have one, two, three boxes, three large boxes in between those two QRS complexes. So then what we wanna do is we wanna take the number 300 and we divide it by three and that's going to tell us that we have 100 beats per minute. Now you'll notice on the previous slide we had 90 beats per minute and now on this one we've got 100 beats per minute. This one is going to be a little bit more accurate because we're using a more finite method and more accurate and so that makes it just a little bit more accurate because we're counting something that's just a little bit smaller and so when you can count in those smaller increments then you're going to be able to come up with a number that's more accurate. Now remember that this is really only accurate if your patient has a regular heartbeat. If your patient has an irregular heartbeat, then your numbers are gonna be all over the place and they're not gonna be nearly as accurate. All right, now let's jump into the rule of 1500. This is very, very similar to 300. So if you understand 300, 1500 is gonna be a complete breeze for you. So you're gonna, again, choose two QRS complexes. And then instead of counting out the large squares, you're going to count out the small squares. So basically what that means is that there are 1500 small squares inside one minute or 60 seconds because everything is beats per minute. That's how we calculate everything. So this one is gonna be even more accurate than the previous two 
because you're counting an even more specific unit of measurement, something even more finite, something even smaller. So it's going to give us that extra space in between. So again, a regular heartbeat is important. And remember that if you ever have a patient who has an irregular pulse, the absolute best way to get their accurate heart rate is to listen to their apical pulse for 60 seconds. All right, so then we're gonna take that number 1500 and divide it by the small squares. So let's choose our two. We're gonna choose the same uh, QRS complexes that we used in the previous one. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna go in and you're gonna count all these little small squares. So you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. You kind of have a half of one that's showing up on there. But we'll just say 15 for our purposes. And then right here, you're going to have 15 divided by 1500 divided by 15. And that is going to equal 100 beats per minute. So you can see here that this number actually matches the previous number. So those two just both happen to be accurate. All right, so just a quick review. To count the QRS method, you need to make sure that you have a six second strip. In order to find out that you have a six second strip, you're going to make sure that there are five boxes, six separate times, and each one of those five boxes is going to be one second. You're then going to count the QRS complexes and multiply that number by 10. The rule of 300 is to choose two QRS complexes and you're going to count the number of big boxes in between those two. And then the rule of 1500 is to choose two QRS complexes and count the number of small boxes in between them. In each one that gets into a smaller unit of measurement is going to be more and more accurate. Thanks for tuning in. Please help me grow my channel by clicking subscribe and follow below. 